Hey, what's going on, y'all? So this is Ricardo Bilazar. Welcome to the channel, Lessons with Ricardo. I'm not feeling the best. I am under the weather, but I'm still doing this recording because I owe it to you and making sure we're on track for you exploring security on you with me uh, and also building out your cyber range. So that being said, today is going to be all about not configuring Security Onion, but configuring the agents that you use with your Security Onion installation. Now, uh, before I go any further, apologies for the audio. I do this kind of hodgepodge mess and I forgot to charge my recorder that the boom mic goes into. Uh, shotgun, boom, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so we're going to deal with the audio we have today, right? Everything's about where we are now. All right, so that being said, let's go jump right into the actual video. All right, so here we are. I'm going to share my screen and you're going to walk, we're going to walk through just some of the steps. Now, first things first, obviously, I want to make sure that when looking at Security Onion, let's revisit the dashboard because I want to show you if you don't do the proper configurations of the agents, what you may see. Like now, missing. Um, I got a lot of missing stuff here. It's come from the system.syslog. You don't want to see that. I mean, I guess the first indicator is red, right? Red is never good. But this is because if you watched the last videos, because I installed the wrong, I guess, agent policy. Yeah, that's what it's called, not a guess. But the wrong agent policy. I did the general one, but I did. I should have done the initial, which I mentioned quite a few times in the video, so that you don't make the same mistakes. Do initial. But this is what it looks like if you did what I did do, which is install the general or the heavy. You're getting a lot of syslogs. The reason why is because you're not actually collecting the proper logs from the endpoints. Now. This is what this shows is general. Once I do some tweaks though, this is what you're looking for. A lot of more green, kind of greenish yellow, blue, a lot less missing. Now the missing still exists because there are two of the agents, which you'll see here and it actually shows one, but there's a second one um, in my current setup. But the, the one that you see here is the initial endpoint is actually on a container. I learned that, hey, initial endpoint has an integration, which you'll see in a moment that does not, well, I guess is not able to collect the logs he's expecting to get, so therefore it's still showing missing on certain components. All right, so we're gonna open up agent policies. We're gonna click on the endpoint initial, as I stated, excuse me. And let's take a look at what we have here. So under endpoint initial, we have, you know, sort of basic stuff. So this is mainly for Linux machines. There is a normal for Windows, which we'll see in just a moment, integration-wise. But pretty much all this is turned on by default. There is a small component at the bottom here to collect metrics. Um, that one I do turn on, and we'll see the reason why. It is collecting just information about the core metrics, the CPU metrics, the disk I.O., input, output, things I think are useful. Now, do I use those at this time? No, I haven't even got into Security Onion really deeply anyway, but these are things that we'll be exploring throughout our journey. Uh, but yeah, I suggest let's turn them on, right? It's not going to hurt much. And honestly, I think it's a great stress test for the very small mini PC I'm running this on. If you're doing the same, I will drop a link to an alternative version of the mini PC I have because the one I purchased doubled in price. All right, so yeah, once we do a change, I'm going to configure it against all agents that run that same policy. And that makes sense. We're modifying the policy level. All right, so now that we've dug into just what some of the integrations look like, let's look at how we create our own policy and maybe add some integrations that way. This is part of these configuring, this is part of the configuring the agent. Like I said, you want to get into this part of it. Now, this is all standard default stuff. I don't change much here. I gave it a very generic name called mine because honestly, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Uh, but I just, I know I probably read the documentation more and shame on me for not reading. Uh, but I kind of like to explore as I go through this kind of stuff and show you <laughs> the the ways to avoid the pitfalls I have and show you, yeah, honestly, I try to show you some of the mistakes, but mostly show you the ways of not making the mistakes that I make. But I'm happy to show mistakes if you want that. All right, so let's say created mine. It comes with the system integration, which is pretty much standard. And like I said, this is going to be the one for Linux uh, boxes. We have to add Windows on there. I just thought about it. Why is it all like targeting Linux and Unix? 
My first thought is probably because the majority of enterprises run a massive amount of Unix slash Linux boxes. So it makes sense you want to monitor a lot of those in addition to the user endpoints, which are using Windows, which we'll see here. So Sysmon was not the proper entry. That is what I thought I may find to expand on the amount of logs we can gather. But then I found Audit D. Now this is for a Linux endpoint specifically. Audit D is the comparable uh, alternative to Sysmon that runs on Windows. Now, if you're not familiar with either one of those, it's just enhanced log gathering for those particular type of computers or devices, okay? So it's uh, it turns on additional logging. It goes in depth as to what it captures, and then it's able to, I guess, surface those logs through a specific uh, setup, which I'll show you in a moment. I actually install Audit D on this machine because I run Linux every day. All right, so looking at this, versions, all this other good stuff, blah, blah, blah. All right, so this is the important part. This is where we're gonna tell it where to look for the logs. Now, if we were doing, if we changed anything about how we set our system up, we would modify it here and redirect to a different path. But I do everything as default as possible unless it needs to be changed for security reasons. I, I run default stuff. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the add Elastic Agent to your host. Um, in fact, we don't have to, we already did it already. I apologize. We'll go ahead and do add it, uh, Elastic Agent later because it's already on there, so we don't need to do it now. Well, here we have it. This is where I'm going to show you how to install Audit D for people running Linux uh, as well. So first of all, it's going to clear the screen. Um, it doesn't matter what directory we're in. It shows up in downloads, but we're going to be using the apt packet manager to uh, install this, but before I go any further, I wanna make sure that it is not already installed. And as we saw on the previous screen, we're looking for a folder labeled as audit under the directory of var slash log. Because I don't have audit folder, pretty confident it's not installed, but of course I can go and check the apt um, package manager as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and do install. If you're not familiar, you do a sudo apt install audit d, all one word. And it'll just go and run after you confirm that you wanna install it. Let's clear the screen again, and then let's check the directory, make sure it created the folder we're looking for. Hot dog, when you have it, it's there. We had the audit folder, now we know everything is running. Yeah, I probably should have looked inside of it, but hey, that's what I have Security Onion for. Don't need to test that part of it out. Security Onion will gather logs for us. Let's use Security Onion. So let's go over to Kali Linux, View Agent, and from here, we'll go down to the audit D-2, and we'll click on logs. This is gonna take it right to the log tab, which we could have navigated to from the tabs above, but I just wanted to show you how to get there a different way. And here we go. We have logs captured in this window, which means it is working. Uh, I'm not sure how many logs are there yet, but at least we know it's working. Like in the last video, if you don't see logs, that's a problem. All right, so now that we have gotten this far, Let's show you what a Windows setup would look like. So we're going to click on the Windows integration. And what you see here is quite a few that are turned off by default. Now, do we really need to turn these on? Uh, yes, I believe so. App Locker is a great thing to monitor for as well as scripting. Uh, yeah, PowerShell turned on by default, which is great. So I'm just going to turn on some of the ones I, I just honestly, I just want to learn more about. So see what the logs look like when I do turn these on. So, and once again, it's trust testing. Let's look at it that way. All right, so it looks good. Let's turn these on as well by Perfmon group. And don't really remember what Perfmon metrics are, but I think it's very similar to the metrics we're collecting on the Linux box, just for Windows. Uh, I've heard Perfmon before. Let's see, what is Perfmon? Well, performance monitoring. Now that we've done all these changes, let's take a look at our dash or our grid which shows the metrics of our box here, and we are not looking good. It shows a lot of red there. Uh, and the CPU usage, as well as the swap is, the uh, sorry, memory is yellow, which is warning, and then the swap usage. So another thing I wanna show you though, another view you can have of your system metrics, the box you're running Security Onion on, is to look at the node metrics here. Now this will take you to the application called InfluxDB. That is also a part of the installation. And you can get to it from the landing page when you log into Security Onion. But obviously, 
all, all alternatives go there from grid now this is all the same data we just looked at just in a very pretty uh, uh, speedometer type setup chart I can't remember what else it's called but uh, I like it great visuals so what I pay attention when I come into this one though is not only do I look at the the very large display of metrics for the CPU and stuff I pay attention to alarm status uh, and those are really important to me to follow to see what kind of alarms are being set off all right so now that we've done that I am going to restart as you see here, the CPU did drop, which means it was just due to maybe some of the configuration I just placed into effect. But I want to go ahead and restart it because it says pending. And I believe that may fix the unhealthy option that I'm seeing under reverse proxy. And no, it does not. So now you see from my point of view what it really was which is the fact that elastic defend endpoints needs attention meaning that it does not collect the logs or is not able to collect the logs because this endpoint is actually a container lxc container and it doesn't have those particular structures in place all right well that's it y'all we have walked through some of the basics of setting up and configuring your actual agent policies which obviously make sure that uh, ensures the agent collects the data you want to collect. Now, uh, this is not everything. There are some custom modules and some customization you can do to the modules, or let me say integrations that you add in here. But honestly, it's a great start if for everyone that's on this channel, I'm hoping you're an explorer and you're looking to uh, tweak things that fits your environment. But I'm hoping this is enough to get you started and going down a path. And if nothing else, if you do just the bare minimum that I'm showing now, you will have a functional sim that will give you a really give you what you need to monitor for bad activities. And honestly, little uh, spoiler alert: my future video shows that. I have been compromised so stick around for that video to drop and I will walk you through how I found it as well as what I did to respond to the uh, activities I found within my own environment and this was definitely outside of my doing all right y'all so thank you for tuning in for today's video if you like it as always make sure you subscribe you comment you like and you share other than that I appreciate you and let's continue the journey together bye